What's up, guys? Nick Wade here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. Uh, I do premium link code problems on my Patreon. You can reach out to me via Discord. Um, this is 539 minimum time difference. Uh, I like this problem. I think it's a uh, one that definitely makes you think. Um, for the you know the optimal solution is pretty difficult. Given a list of 24 hour clock time points hour and minutes format, find the minimum minutes difference between any two points in the list. Okay, so the list in this example is 2359 and 0000. 0, 0, 0. The minimum difference is just adding one minute to 2359 and then it turns to 0000, 0, 0, 0, instead of going all the way backwards. Um, that would be like 1439 minutes to do go all the way backwards, but um, the thing is, this ex they don't have that many examples, but look at this. The number, uh, the number of time points in the given list is at least two and won't exceed 20,000. So that means the list can have a m ton of time points. It could be like this, right? It could be like, um, you know, 10, 10 or, and 11, 11, and, uh, you know, whatever you want, you know, like one, th 30 or like 0 130 or whatever so these this is like a potential list too it could be up to 20,000 different uh, string representation of numbers and what we want to find is the minimum difference between um, any two points in this list so the minimum difference is obviously still 2359 and 0000 because it's just one minute compared to you know this is like a 60 minute difference um, from here to here is very long. That's like, you know, uh, 10 hours or more. Um, and, um, you know, the other ones, there's nothing closer than these two, right? So that's just an example I came up with. Um, but yeah, th they don't really explain that, but you can have a ton of these, uh, you know, strings. There's a, you, you have a lot and you want to find only between two points. You just want to find the minimum difference of, um, you know, two points within the array. So how do we do this? Uh, this is not very, this, this is hard. This one's hard, honestly. This is a very difficult problem, I think, to come up with a, the best solution. It's not that difficult if you think of like worse solutions, like n log n with n space. That's not a too difficult of a solution if you use external data structures and stuff like that. But coming up with a linear solution with constant time space is very difficult for this problem. You have to sit and think about it a lot. And what we're going to be using is buckets to solve this problem. Um, we're going to do it in linear time, constant space, um, and we're going to use a bucket array of booleans. So we still consider this constant space because what we're using here is we're going to we're going to loop through each time point and we're going to have an array of all possible minute combinations. So this is going to be a boolean array of 24 hours times 60 minutes, which is uh, 1440 different points within this array. Each different point represents a different, it's all possible times, right? One minute up into 1440 minutes is from the time 0000 up into 2359. So um, we just multiply the hours by minutes. So if it was one hour, we just count that as 60 minutes. And then, you know, one, if the, if the time was, you know, for example, 0101, then what we would do is we'd count this, we just take this, we multiply it by 60. So that'd be 60 plus one. So it would be the 61 position in this array. Um, but we're doing indices, so it'd be 60. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through this and we're gonna loop through every time point. We will loop through every time point in this array. And like I said, it could be a lot of time points. We're going to go through this Boolean array and mark down at that particular index of whatever time we're looking at in the minutes index in this array. We're going to say, okay, we saw this time. So we're going to just loop through. So for string time in time points, the array, this is just looping through the array. So it's going to go like this one, then this one, etc. 
and we're going to split the time up. We're gonna say, okay, string array time split is equal to time dot split. And we split on the colon so that we can, cause this is a string, we gotta split it so that we can grab the hours and the minutes, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, this is a string, so we have to do this. Int hour is equal to time split of zero, cause it's gonna be the first part of the split, right? If we split on this, the first index, the, you know, the position zero will be this, position one will be this. So we grab the hour at position zero and it's a string still. So we have to do integer dot parse int, which is just a method to convert a string to integer in Java. Then we want to get the minutes. So we want to say uh, minute is equal to time split of one. And then what we'll do is we'll say time scene of hour time 60 could put this in parentheses to make it a little bit clearer. Like I said, we multiply the hour by 60 to get the hour and minutes form. Plus minutes, or plus minute, is equal to true. So we just basically take each time and we convert it into all minutes and then access this Boolean array and say, okay, we saw that time. So we're saying, we're going into this Boolean array and saying we saw this time and we loop through every time in the time array and we say, where we saw the time into an array. And this is constant space because this is only an array of size 1440. Um, you could count it as, you know, O of 1440 or whatever, but this isn't, we're not putting each time into an array. That would be linear. If there were 20,000 time points and we put all of those into an array, that would be linear with the number of time points. But this is only 1440 maximum because that's all the possible minutes in time. So we're gonna mark this as true and if we see a time, if we see the same time again, well, we can just account for that here. If time seen, if we have already seen the time that we're about to add into our array, so if time seen of the current time we're looking at has already been seen, then we're just gonna return zero because the, that means we saw two of the same times in this array. So for example, if we saw like um, 0, 0, 0, 0, twice, we'd be looping through. We see this, then we add that into the array. We see this, we say, okay, that into the array. Um, so we say, okay, we, we put true at this, at uh, index zero in the array. Then we see it again though, we see it again here. And we say, okay, wait a second. We've already seen this. We set it to true last time, it's true now. So the minimum difference between two points, if we've seen a duplicate is zero, right? There's nothing that can go less than that. They're exactly the same, so zero. So once we do this, we have filled a Boolean array with every possible time that we can see in this array and we've see, we say if we've seen it or not. Um, so now what we wanna do, this is the part where we find the minimum difference between points. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use uh, the integer wrapper cl class so that we could set it to null at first, set our variables to null. We're gonna say first time we see, first time seen is going to be equal to null. We're gonna say integer uh, previous time seen is going to be equal to null as well. We're going to say integer min minimum difference, whatever you want to call it, minimum difference. This is going to be what we return. We'll just set it to a maximum. You usually want to set your mins to maxes. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have first time C seen be the, we're going to loop through this array of all the um, possible times. And if we've seen the time, the first time we see, we're going to set first time seen to that and leave it. And we want to do that so at the end we can compare the last time we see previous time is just going to get updated every time we see a new time in this array because it's all boolean so if it's if we've seen the time if we added it in from that array from um this um then we're going to just keep updating previous time to that at the end previous time will be the last time so we're gonna just do a final comparison at the end between the last and the first, and if that's lower than the minimum, we'll just update the minimum and return that. So this is what we're gonna be returning. We're gonna return minimum difference. Now all we have to do now is we're gonna loop through this array. It's size 1440, so i is less than 1440. 
I++, looping through this Boolean array of times that we've seen, and we're going to say, okay, if time seen is true of the current position, well, then that means that we've seen time, so we actually want to do something. And within this, we're going to say, okay, we've seen this time before. Is first time seen equal to null? If so, let's set, that means that we haven't seen a time yet. So we'll say first time seen equals I, prev time seen equals I. So that's fine. If first time seen is already set, we don't care about it anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to just check, um, we're going to update the prev time seen, right? Prev time seen is equal to I every time we see a time. Every time we see a time that we have seen before, we're just going to update the previous, and we're going to also check for a new minimum difference. Minimum dif difference will be the math.min of the current minimum difference, as well as the math.min of the current time we're seeing, so i, which is the number of minutes, so a time that we've seen, minus the previous time that we've seen, so this will be the difference between the current time and the previous time. So we want the minimum between that and the minimum between, so this is the clockwise version of the difference. We can also go counterclockwise in this array, right? We, like you could see here, we're going upwards and we're, it goes right to zero, 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 zero. So you can go counterclockwise as well and go all the way down to zero. So counterclockwise would be the number of minutes minus I plus previous time seen. That gives us the counterclockwise distance. So we want the minimum, we check the minimum each time between the current minimum and the minimum between the clockwise and the counterclockwise difference between the current time we're seeing and the previous time we're seeing. You update this every time throughout the loop and then at the end, we'll be at the very end and all we wanna do, this will have found the minimum difference unless the very last uh, time we see and the first time we see are very close together. So we'll just do a check. It's very similar to this kind of check. So we'll just do math minimum difference is equal to math.min of the minimum difference and no longer I, but we're gonna use the previous time seen, which will be the last at the end of all of this loop and the first time seen. So the very minimum time we've seen and the maximum time we've seen, they might be closer because you can just loop upwards. Like in this case, this would be the last time we see um, and this would be the first time we see. So the first time we see would be, I mean, this is a bad example, but in a case like this with extra numbers, um, you know, like I did at the beginning, like with 101 and, you know, 1030 or whatever, um, then this would be the first time we see, this would be the last time we see in this array of minutes. And the difference between these we wanna check because they could be closer than just minimums we found throughout the array. Um, so yeah, we just wanna check that. So last time minus first time and 1440 minus last time plus first time. Counterclockwise and uh, clockwise distance. So that's it, that's the um, solution there. It is linear with constant space. A Little bit difficult to understand. Let me know if you guys had a tough time understanding this one. I think I explained it pretty well, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, let me know if you guys don't understand. I'll try and I, maybe I can make another video. I don't, I don't feel amazing about this one, but um, you're converting the time into minutes, each string time into minutes, putting it into a minutes array looping through saying, oh, we saw this time as minutes, putting it into a true, true, setting it as true in here, looping through all of the times that we saw in the minutes array this time, putting the first time and then putting the previous time, each time we see a new time we've seen, and then just updating the minimum of the previous and the current time that we're seeing. And then at the end, just wanna check the first and the last. So that's it. It's not too difficult once you understand. I think just the syntax is a little bit tricky, especially with the strings in this one. But I feel like you guys can handle this. It's not too difficult. Not one of the hard ones like um, some of the ones we've done before. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate everyone that watched the videos. And I will see you guys in the next solution or whatever. So see ya. 
See ya. I don't know. All right, see ya.